Good morning, everybody. My name is Pamela. If you are new and joining me, I woke up this morning. It is Wednesday morning, and it's 9.09 a.m. Pretty early. I don't usually get on this early and make a video. I normally wait till after my prayer closet, but the Lord has had stuff to say today. So this message is going to be for the bride. I'm very thankful and excited when he gives me messages for the bride because that's what I feel like I'm called to do is encourage the bride. And now I'm going to have two kids. Let me try and get to this message. So the Lord put it on my heart. No. I was praying about no. what to read. Because like I said in one of my other videos, I need direction. Like you have chiefs, you have Indians. I'm an Indian. I need direction. I'm great at helping. I'm great at doing things, but I need direction. So, um, he gives me direction. He told me to read Exodus, and I said, well, what do you want me to read? He said, Exodus. Mm -hmm. it wasn't me scrolling. He said Exodus, and I'm thinking, like, why, why do you want me to read Exodus? And then, <clears throat> as soon as I turned it on, I said, I wonder if this is having to do with the message that I put out yesterday. And it does. There's been some other things. Like in the beginning of the message, he uh, showed me something that I want to bring to your attention. Um, you know how in the beginning when um, Moses and Aaron go and start performing some of the signs to get Pharaoh to see that these are from the Lord. And now there's magicians there, and the magicians are doing the same signs. Like, the Lord was showing me that there's churches, which I've been to a church, who um, would have a little innocent magician that would come in for the kids and this and that. And he was, like, telling me them are not for... Which, I know this, this was like back in 2003. I was just a baby Christian. I didn't even feel right about it then. Um, but he was showing me that those are not of God. Magicians, no matter how innocent they may look, they're not from him. And he even showed me how the magicians received the plagues too. So, there's that. He gave me that little message. But as I continued reading, uh, which is really weird because for a quick second I had to run upstairs. I was just a little chilly. This morning was supposed to be 80 degrees, but I was a little chilly. I ran upstairs and then I came back down here and I just left my Bible playing with my big speaker on. Maybe the speaker wasn't even on. Anyways, don't matter. Uh, I come down here and I come down at the part and the Lord wanted me to hear this part. Uh, Exodus 8.23. I will make a distinguish. I will make a distinction between my people and yours. I will make a distinction between my people and Satan's people, people of the world. God's people will be protected from plagues and pestilences. So this is for you. If you're listening, you're abiding in the presence of the Lord. You probably already know this, but chances are you have to go out into the world where this world is filled with fear and caution and panic and just the enemy has did exactly what he set out to do with this whole plague that has gone about and the Lord continues speaking to me he said from the beginning to the Bible to the very end I make a distinguish I make a distinction between my people and Satan's people. Then he gave me Revelation 7.3. So let's take that because I want to lead you. I want to be in the word and lead you with the word. So I'm in new um Okay. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. There you go. So, very end of the Bible, he's still making a, a distinction between his people and Satan's people. Another scripture, Revelation 9.4. 
They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So from the, the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, God is making a distinction of his people, who his people are. Who are his people? His people are like people who are like you and I. Those who are hungry and thirsty for the word of God, who are... We can't go a day. We don't we don't want to go a long stretch of time without feeling the presence of the Lord, without knowing that we're here from the Lord. We just want God's will for our life. We want God to use us for the little time that we know that we have here left. The Lord is speaking to his children. Um, just those who just can't get enough of the Lord and we're just sowing in our time just we don't want to be out of his presence for any period of time we're just continuing to try to stay close to him that is that is distinguishing and uh, one more thing in Exodus 9 6 it, it says and before I read this let me explain this when I was reading and he was talking about all these different plagues or pestilences that he brought on Egypt. Not one. The animals were close. The homes were close. Not one touched any of God's people. And right here in 9.6 it says, And the next day the Lord did it, and all the livestock of the Egyptians died. But not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. And then he gave me this message. I pushed play after I wrote this down and pushed play. And I heard him clearly start talking. He said, my people know this, but the enemy has sown fear even into some of my children. They have shown churches on TV being shut down due to the spread of this plague. But I say, just because a person is in a church doesn't make them mine. I don't care how many churches that you see on TV or how many people, pastors that you see that have died from the plague or how many people or whoever comes up to you and says, well, so-and-so loved the Lord and she died. I don't care what is said, what tool the enemy uses. I use the word of God and if the word of God says it, it is true. And he wants you to know that too. If the word of God says he's protecting his people from pestilences and plagues, Take God at his word because he is not a God that he would lie. He is a God that tells the truth. So I just wanted to give this encouragement today. And I wanted to get out right now because later on when I get into my prayer closet, I never know what the Lord is going to talk to me about. And I don't want to be behind in messages. So um, I went a little while longer listening just in case as I continued to listen to Exodus he wanted to speak because I didn't want to do two messages on the same thing because sometimes I will like jump the gun because I want to get a message out like I'm so excited I have this information he's telling me I want to get out now but I want to make sure that it was everything so I hope that you are encouraged by this stay close to God know that he loves you and uh, you are his if you don't know the Lord I suggest that you accept him today that you ask him to come into your life to forgive you of your sins and that you believe what he did for you on calvary that he died on the cross and that he rose on the third day to save you from your sins and he will come into your life the holy spirit will come upon you to come upon you and they will he will change your life if you sincerely say that so with sincere heart that you accept and believe what he did and ask him to forgive you your sins, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and your life will be changed. He'll begin to open your eyes and um, your life will be changed forever. And so, you know, we have some time. The rapture hasn't happened. I know that it is going to happen. My husband's called me. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to take this call and I will see you beautiful people later. Bye.